Contracts stunk cut. Yeah, you know that's us. Where we only speak the real and the real rock with us. Where we motivate the people and the politic on success. Oh no, we ain't DJ Kelly, but they swear we the best. Contracts on cut. What's happening? It's Contrast Uncut. It's season three. This is my spotlight episode. And you know, I had to take it back to what I call home, Bakersfield. And you know, we're going to spend a whole episode on this spotlight with something real special to me. I want to give a big shout out to Uncle Snoop's Army and Bobby D Presents. It's your host, Zylo, aka DJ Juan Dollars, like I won some money. Like I said, today we got an incredibly, incredibly dope special guest. He's from where a place I call home, Bakersfield, California. This brother is a young and true athlete, standing at six foot three, playing guard, the one or the two, with his primary focus in basketball, and is taking the game to the next level. I've had the honor to call the play-by-play as an announcer for football games at Smothers Academy back in the day, and that is honestly why I first recognized his brother's gifts and his talents that he displayed on and off the field. At this point, this brother was in the sixth grade. He walks up to me after the first game I ever called as an announcer with my nephew, and he was like, I appreciate you pronouncing my name right. And I was thinking to myself, like, damn, he actually recognized while he's playing on the field, I said his name right. And my name being Zylo Heffer, and I get my name screwed and misconstrued and mispronunciated so much that, you know, I take appreciation in calling people their name correctly. And when I said Milan Aqua, this brother, he recognized it when he was on the field. And plus, he was out there smacking and smacking and balling. And, you know, that little bit of recognition that he gave me that day was a little enough, enough for me to be like, I need to pay attention to what this brother does. Because people are humble enough from the young age to see and pay homage. You know, the career and the lights can get bright. And you have to appreciate that. And, you know, the way how the universe works, my wife, she works at Agape Land Christian Academy and is good friends with this brother's family. So I was able to hear about his growth and his accomplishments along his journey. And, you know, it wasn't easy for him. He went from Bakersfield to Chino to Louisiana and then back off to finish high school in, at, in L.A. at L.A. Cathedral. And he kept the same goal, succeed at what you love, basketball. Earning a scholarship at Washington State, starting seven games during his redshirt freshman year. And then, you know, he, he opted to move on, move closer to – his home type of environment, transferring to Cal Baptist University in Riverside. And you know, that put him way closer to home. And at Cal Baptist, this brother hit the ground running. In his first year, he was a uh, new coming player of the year. And then he was also first team all whack for both years that he was there. And you know, this brother is an unstoppable playmaker with lockdown defense and a double edged sword as a prolific scorer and passer. And he was recognized this past year as earning the Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year, having to make the tough decision and leading him to forego his senior year and enter the NBA draft. This brother has a lot on his mind and his time is short. And if you don't know who I have on the episode by now, it's all good. We got all show long to chop it up with young Lando, Milan, Aqua, everybody. What's going on? Nice to, nice to have, uh, be on the show with you guys. Appreciate it. All right, thanks, bro. Thank you. No, time's the most finite thing we have on this earth. And I got to make sure I tell you from the jump, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you rocking with me and rocking with the listeners. No, I appreciate you having me. Like you said, time is money. So I appreciate you uh, taking the time to do this interview for sure. Yes, sir. Speaking of time, Milan, what's the normal 24 hours for you? Uh, normal 24 hours, depending on what day it is, Monday, Tuesday, I'm still in classes. So on uh, Monday, I have class around 9.30, but before that, I like to get up and listen to like a, a Creflo Dollar video or um, get a little prayer in, prayer session in before I start my day so I can go about my day and, and attack the day. Whatever comes my way, I'll be, I'll be solid. Um, so go to class, well, wake up, pray, go to class, um, which is online. Then after that, um, straight to the workout at around 11. Um, and then some days, like on Tuesdays, Thursdays, I have uh, weightlifting before I go work out on the court. So it'll be strength and conditioning at like nine. 
15, then on to the court at um, 11. Then after that, um, get a stretch in, um, just rest and get ready for the next day. Thanks. So your life revolves around right now, schoolwork, playmaking, and making plays in real life. Exactly. Trying to, just trying to get to it. Come on, progress daily. And then, you know, let the markers show for the paper trail. I got a quote, Milan. Let me know how this quote relates to you, or if it doesn't, the ideas, I want you to talk about it. And I'm going to be honest, every time I do a quote for everybody, I try to go in my spirit and go with, like, what speaks to me, what also speaks from your history. And right. here we go. I'll do whatever it takes to win games, whether it's sitting on a bench, waving a towel, handing a cup of water to a teammate, or hitting the game-winning shot. Kobe Bryant. That's Kobe Bryant. That's what Kobe Bryant said. Yes, sir. I agree. I I, I definitely agree with that quote. Um, definitely love to win. Um, oh, it's always my goal to be on the court and, and help the team win, obviously. But if that's if that's not the case at that time, I'm definitely the number one cheerleader for sure. I'm on the sideline and you know trying to do whatever I can to make sure we put ourselves in the best position to win. So I agree with that quote. Absolutely not, because I've witnessed it. I've seen the games at Cal State, and then, I, you know, we've seen Sports Center when you hit that game-winning shot. You know, those things, those acclamations are definitely a, a blessing to see because, you know, you're recognized for it. And, I mean, I, you, bro, you're a big – I don't want to say cheerleading because that's not the right word, but you're <laughs> a big teammate, brother. Like, you greatly – everyone revolves around your energy, and people will get up higher as soon as they come in your presence. And you could witness that from the stands. I appreciate that, no, for sure. I tried to try my best. Well, last year was my my biggest year in, in leading. So last year I tried to really work on every day in practice, like bringing my vocal skills and, and getting those better daily. So even if I wasn't having a good day, I tried to bring those around me and push them to be better and have their best day no matter what. So. Yes, yes. Now, speaking about basketball, did the game choose you or did you choose the game? Uh, I would say I, I would say it chose me. Um, when I was younger, I used to watch games with my mom and my dad. As soon as I, as soon as I knew what basketball was, I was on the court with my dad. So um, I would say the game chose me. Obviously, I, I played football and basketball at a young age, but at that time, I loved football more. So but there was just something about basketball that I just wanted to keep playing. So I, that's why I say chose me. I, I really loved football more at that time. And I felt like I was better at football, but basketball was just, you know, I, I just couldn't give it up. So I feel like it chose me. So when would you consider your first confirmation that, you know, pretty much hitting that court, lacing them shoes and wearing a jersey is going to be a career? Um, I would say when I was, probably like five. First time I started playing, I I uh, realized I, I loved the game, but it was football at first, but I realized I, I wanted to be some type of athlete um, when I first started playing. But um, once I started to get to like seventh grade, I started to, to see that I could have a future in, in basketball and, you know, wanted to be the best player in the world, actually. Yeah. Mm, that's right. Being the best player in the world comes from manifestation. It comes from having a vision. It's walking by faith, not by sight. And, you know, having prayer, prayer upon prayer. But at the same time, prayer with no work is, is effortless. And that's one thing we can all say, no matter what point you flip the page on Milan Aqua's book, effort has always been there. And that has made the prayer and manifestation become a dream to reality. And so what can you tell the listeners on your journey to manifestations? Like you said, prayer without works is, is dead. But um, I would say that my biggest thing was I would I would work, but not rest. At this, if, if if you know what I mean. So I would work as hard as I could, but mentally I would put the pressure on myself instead of putting the pressure on God. So when it would be in game, when I'll be in games, I'll if I miss a shot, I'm like, oh, I'm letting people down or until I started really putting the pressure on God and understanding that I don't have to rely on myself, but I still have to work hard, but I don't have to rely on myself to be successful. That's when I started to be successful. Mm. I wanted to make sure we spend time on the importance of perfecting your craft, putting in the hour after hour after hour at practice and after practice to see your gifts 
in full display. And as you just said, you know, you'd be thinking about and putting all that pressure on you, but that pressure comes from a, a word called passion and passion leads to purpose. And when you have a purpose, you can do that job for free and you go ahead and put in so many hours and that hours we're talking about is a master work ethic. Those are 10,000 hours put in an outlier. Can you give the listeners an insight to the path you took to earn a scholarship with adversity and obstacles at every corner? Uh, the path I took, um, really, I would just say it was God, but um, growing up, I played in Bakersfield till about eighth grade. Um, my eighth grade year, I ended up moving to Louisiana um, with my dad. And then <clears throat> I just worked out for a whole year out there and was homeschooled. And after that, um, that's when my game really went to the next level. Um, came back, started high school in uh, Pasadena at LaSalle High School. Um, and then I ended up transferring to Chino Hills after my coach got fired at LaSalle. And um, at Chino Hills, I went there because my boys went there and I felt like we could be a successful team. Um, got there, got injured a couple times. So it just wasn't the right fit for me. Um, and I felt like I needed to be at a place where I could develop my my skills as a point guard and, you know, run my own team. So that's when I transferred to Cathedral High School for my junior and season, senior season. Um, my junior season, I ended up getting um, offered by Washington State. Um, this was my first Pac-12 offer. So I felt like um, with what they were telling me and, and the confidence I had in myself that I would be able to go to Washington State right away and play which is why I committed my junior year instead of waiting. Um, so I ended up um, committing my junior year. Then um, my senior year got hurt. And um, that lingered into my freshman year at Washington State. And then I redshirted. And then I uh, came back, played that season, and ended up transferring to CBU. So it's been a full journey. Oh, yeah. I mean, you damn near went across the whole United States. <laughs> and then you the amazing part about God is that he will put you in the place you're supposed to be. And right. he'll, he'll let you have a journey. He'll let you go the long route so you can learn so much and see right. so much, touch so much. And then the beauty is that he'll put you right back where you're supposed to be the whole time. Exactly. This, go ahead. Go ahead. No, that's, you hit it right on the head. That's basically been my journey. I feel like I, you know, the path that I, that I was put on was different than, a lot of my peers um, and I feel like it just developed me in a, um, a different type of way mentally, um, spiritually, and then emotionally, I, I feel like I'm more stable now. Um, and I feel like I can go through anything and still, you know, rely on God and know that I'll be fine. So I feel like it was just, you know, that was a part of his plan to, to get me to understand that I need to trust him and, and rely on him. So. Yes. Yes. What has been one thing that people have messed up or they got misconstrued or they have a misconception about taking your craft to the next level? Um, I would say that probably, probably people, people probably think that I uh, can't shoot or haven't developed a, a jump shot um, just by the numbers that I had last year. Um, and then I would say, um, I don't think people understand that the competitor I am, uh, I really hate losing. So that, that just comes with, you know, putting those extra hours in or doing what, like you said, doing whatever it takes to win. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. What has been your three dopest moments so far that you've been able to experience with this game? Mm, that's a good question. Uh, one was for sure the, the half court shot that you were talking about, the game winner. Uh, I hit game winners before, but not from half court. Um, and then the other one was in high school, the game winner I hit um, my junior season uh, at Cathedral. And then was another one. Um, probably just. I would say that my experience at Washington State was a, a great experience for me because, like you said, it taught me so much. So I have to take that in, into consideration and, and count that as one of the moments, too, really. 
That's so dope that you recognize that that low of having to go through these obstacles as a high because it puts you in a position to be naturally selective and appreciative a lot further than what you were doing while you were there. It was like, I feel like it was right. a machine attached to it. No, for sure. For sure. You hit it right on the head. That's exactly what it was. It, it was a, a development stage for me. So really, yeah, I look at it now as a, as a, as a high and a positive because of what I got out of it. You know, I don't think I would have got those things um, if I didn't go through those experiences and, and they helped me develop my character and, and my mental, so. Yes. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and bring us something because you know, Snoop Dogg presents my show. You know I gotta talk about some music. <laughs> you know, the 50 and 30 EP stars Zoe and Young Lando was three tracks up here, gas. I mean, the, reflection, the mood to match the energy of the beat and song, the bars were hard as granite. And I'm like, bro, when are we going to see some more music from you and Zoe? Or, or if you going to do some more on the side? Like, I know that there's pressure because there's a, a very conservative world that I ain't going to talk too much about, but you got to play that thin line. And so, you know, just as a music head, I'm like, is it going to be some more? Or, you know, what's the deal? Nah, yeah, we for sure, we're going to get back in the studio soon. We just, there's so much going on with the pandemic and everything, but nah, for sure, once we both get to where we're supposed to be, we got some more stuff coming for sure. Okay, well, while we talking about, shout out KP, you know, Kenneth <laughs> Uh Brad, I'm going to put a pause on, on the whole uh, sports topics and, and the career topics. Uh, how we doing on time? No, we're good. We're okay. good right now. Okay. I, I have about, an awareness I got segment. About five, seven more minutes. Okay, perfect. I will run through this. <laughs> I have an awareness segment and a impulse Q and A, and so here we go. My awareness segment, and it's you know it's near and dear to the heart because it's a reality for so many. You know, when you hear those red and blue, or you see those red and blue lights, you hear that blurp sound and that high beam hits the back. No matter what city you are in, no matter what you're doing, the stress and the the next thought of what's going to happen next lays on your mind. Anxiety kicks in. And so sure. I ask every guest, when was the last time they were pulled over? And what's some advice in the situation of interacting with the police to get out of it safely? Last time I was pulled over, probably six months ago. Um, I think I got pulled over for making an illegal U-turn or something like that. <laughs> but um, the advice that I would give probably would just be, um, you know, make sure you tell the cop whatever you're doing before you do it. Like with your hands, don't move, don't make no sudden movements, um, especially being a person of color and, and what we're going through right now. Um, don't make any sudden movements. Be very clear about what you're about to do. Um, and then just be respectful. Those are those are the biggest things that I would say. Absolutely. Knowledge is power, but when you use that knowledge, it becomes a superpower. And there's no other time to become a superhuman being than dealing with someone with a badge and a gun. Right. My next segment, it's called Impulse Q&A. And I got to make sure I tell you, I appreciate your testimony and transparency, brother, because that right there, it helps people understand that it's real. And, right. and people live in a facade type world and not you know, recognize what's real and fake until they're in the situation. Exactly. Now, like I said, next segment, it's a little bit more easier on the mind. It makes you think. It's called Impulse q and A. I I got three questions, and uh, hopefully we get three answers. If you don't like the question, it's all good. Say pass, and I'll hit you with another question. So I want three. All right. <laughs> all right, sure. All right, here we go. Question number one. What is the funniest date night you can remember? Funniest date night? Pass. Fair enough. Question number one. If you had your own personal mascot, what would it be? If I had my own personal mascot, it would be um, a cross. Mm, that's right. Amen. Question number two. What is one food you recommend everyone tries at least once? Um, oh, uh, it's, it's an African dish that my, my grandma makes. Um, I'm Ghanaian, so... Probably some corned beef and rice or jollof rice. Those are those are the two dishes. Mm. Question number three. If you were trapped in the elevator, God forbid that. If you were trapped in the elevator for three hours, what album are you listening to to get you through? 
Mm. That's tough. Uh, I'll probably have to go with a, um, man, that's tough. Oh, no, I'll probably have to go with a G Herbo album. A lot of people don't know who that is, but either G Herbo or Drake. Mm. Probably, probably G Herbo though. Herbo be gassing, bro. <laughs> Right, you survived my impulse Q and A. You survived my awareness segment as a reward. Let's promote. What do you want the viewers to tune in, or 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 what? Do you, you know, it's your platform. You want to shout out anybody? Now is the time. No, I don't really. I don't. I mean, I don't really got nothing to shout out. Um, just you know, follow my journey, and then see where I see where I head, see where I land. Um, now I appreciate you having me though, for real. Absolutely, Milan. Uh, I want to make sure, bro, I give a shout out to your mother and to your aunt, Michelle and Tara. I appreciate you, Queens, for allowing me to set up the interview, do the interview. I appreciate you. I want to make sure we give a shout out to Agape Land Christian Academy and as well as CCC Compassion Christian Center. And one last thing, uh, I want to give a shout out to Hoop Culture. You know, I appreciate them rocking with the show and supporting Contrast Uncut. It's Contrast Uncut. This is the Spotlight episode. I've had the honor and the pleasure of chopping it up with Bakersfield's very own Ron Aqua. We was just chopping, chopping. Brother was letting them diamonds drop from the sky like a, a diamond in the rough. And boy, it was shining and sparkling before it touched the ground. I want to give a shout out to Bobby D Presents and Uncle Snoop's Army because I wouldn't be able to do incredibly dope shit like just chopping it up with this brother before he takes on his next step to his next journey. Thank you, Milan. I can't say that enough for coming on here, bro, and just rocking with the viewers. No, I appreciate you. Thank you again. I'm Milan Aqua, and you're tuned in to Contrast Uncut. Projects and tell my story over beats and it could be a project. Look how it all begun. Uh, bum skibbity bum. Yeah, grew up on that Nas, on that L, on that pun. Oh, so when I was young, crisscross, make them jump. Battle rapper for respect, my nigga. This ain't what you want. Can I kick it when I'm rhyming? Be a legend through Ebonics. Was a sticker boy. Felt like sticky fingers played at Onyx. Can I live track eight? Felt like Jigga 96. Without a reasonable doubt, the album turned me into this. Shit, we always had dreams of being money making mitch without jewelry on. Hit it, jail. Pose. Take a flick, feel like pop and keep your head up. Biggie shooting juice, the coach is still alive, just let me prove. King, nigga. Everything that you do, baby, I salute you. Every dream that came true. Wasn't that a really fucking good episode? I agree. Make sure you hit the like button down below, you hit that subscribe button that's red and white, turn on your notifications, and leave some comments. Follow the people involved. You can follow the show at the Contrast Uncut. You can follow the host at DJ Juan Dollars. Don't forget me. Oh, yeah. Make sure you follow my producer at The Real Kev King. And, don't, you know, don't, don't forget about Bobby D Presents or Uncle Snoop's Army. The clothes, the clothes. Oh, yeah. The fresh merch. Everything I got on, there'll be a link for you to buy the stuff. Fresh merch. Go ahead. Follow them as well. Fresh Organics. Thank you, everybody involved. Shout out to everybody that does the music. King Dreams. Because of you, featuring my guy Mars, shout out to JP Bangs for making the intro and being the music supervisor, and big shout out to Sequence for laying that incredible intro. Thank you everybody involved.